Welcome back to Bad World, where we dive into the amazing processes that fuel life. In today's video, we are exploring one of the most crucial step in cellular respiration, the electron transfer chain. This process is key to generating ATP, the energy currency of the cell. Ready to learn how cells harness energy? Let's dive right in. The electron transport chain or ETC is a series of protein complexes and molecules located in the inner mitochondrial membrane in eukaryotic cells. It's the final step in aerobic respiration following glycolysis and the citric acid cycle. Here, high energy molecules like NADH and FADH2 donate electrons which pass through a series of complexes ultimately producing ATP, the energy that powers almost every process in the cell. Let's break it down. The process starts when NADH and FADH2, which are which were created earlier in cellular respiration, donate electrons to the electron transfer chain. NADH donates its electrons to complex 1, known as NADH dehydrogenase. Here, electrons move through the complex and are transferred to coenzyme Q, COQ, reducing it to ubiquinol, COQH2. This step also pumps protein across the inner mitochondrial membrane, creating a protein gradient. Meanwhile, FADH2 donates electron to complex 2, known as succinate dehydrogenase, which also causes electrons to COQ but does not pump proteins. Now, COQH2 carries the electrons to complex 3, also known as cytochrome BC1. Here, the electrons are transferred to the cytochrome C1 and another small protein in the intermembrane space. More proteins are pumped across the membrane. The final step happens at complex 4, also called the cytochrome C oxidase. This complex receives electrons from cytochrome C and transfers them to oxygen, the terminal electron acceptor. Oxygen combines with the protons to form water. This is why oxygen is essential for aerobic respiration. As electrons flow through the complexes, protons are pumped into the intermembrane space, creating a proton gradient and electrochemical potential. This gradient powers ATP synthase, an enzyme that acts like a turbine. Proton flow back into the mitochondrial matrix through ATP synthase and the energy from this flow drives the conversion of ADP and inorganic phosphate into ATP. For each NADH molecule, around 3 ATP molecules are produced, while for each FADH2, about 2 ATP molecules are generated. There are substances that can block the ETC. For example, cyanide inhibits complex 4, preventing oxygen from accepting electrons and stopping ATP production. These work as the inhibitors of the ETC cycle. Next are the redonate inhibits complex 1 and antimyosin. A blocks complex 3. This in, these inhibitors can be lethal because they prevent cells from generating ATP. Before the electron transport chain, we go through a few important steps in cellular respiration. First, in glycolysis, glucose is broken down into the pyruvate in the cytoplasm, producing 2 NADH and a small amount of ATP. Then, in the uh, link reaction, pyruvate is converted into AC acetyl coenzyme, which enters the citric acid cycle in the mitochondria. This cycle generates more NADH and FADH2, which are crucial for fueling the ETC. After the ETC, all the proteins pumped across the membrane generate the potential energy needed for ATP synthesis. ATP synthase converts this energy into ATP which the cell uses for nearly all its function. The ATP also produces water as a byproduct when oxygen combines with electrons and proteins. Now the question comes in our mind, where does the ETC take place? In eukaryotic cell, the ETC takes place in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Mitochondria are known as the powerhouses of the cell because this is where most ATP is produced in prokaryotic cell. 
which lack mitochondria. The electron transport gene occurs in the plasma membrane. The electron transport gene is a marvel of biochemistry. It efficiently converts energy from electrons into a proton gradient that powers ATP synthesis, sustaining all the energy needs of a cell. Understanding this process is crucial for grasping how our bodies and virtually all aerobic life produce the energy needed to thrive. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell for more educational content right here on Batik World. Keep exploring and as always, stay curious. Thanks for watching.